Hi, my name is Frank Martel. I'm the director of Fine and Rare Wines here at Heritage Auctions. One thing that sets wine apart from other types of collectibles is the fact that it's a very visceral experience. You get to drink it and enjoy it and share it and talk about it with virtually everybody. It transcends culture, it transcends race, it transcends profession, it transcends language. It's a very interesting thing. And to those ends, you find people drawing special attachment to wines from their birth year or maybe their anniversary year. And there's something very cool about having a wine that was made at the same time you were born or to think about a particular year in your life that was really meaningful. There's something very cool about attaching historical significance to a, to a wine of a vintage that really means something to you personally. Buying significant wine isn't just for people who are wine collectors or who are really deeply invested in, in the hobby of collecting and drinking wine. Um, there are lots of people who, for a special occasion, will splurge. These birthday and anniversary wines are significant because of the date. It's not because somebody knows something in particular about that one wine. Finding the best wine out of your birth year really makes it worth sometimes reaching up to maybe something you wouldn't normally spend on wine and in some cases that can be a gateway to collecting other wines. It can be a starting point rather than a destination. One of the things that people commonly find scary about getting into wines is the idea that there's this mystical wine knowledge out there that they don't possess and somebody else has and they don't want to make a mistake. And the truth of the matter is that nobody starts off with wine knowledge. You acquire wine knowledge slowly by tasting things and the hard part remembering what you had when you've had them. One of the first things that you should do if you're going to collect wine or if you're going to start drinking wine is to really know what you like. Uh, the hardest part is deciding uh, what, what sorts of wines you really want to invest your time in. And I think a lot of people start with domestic wines because they're easy to understand. It's important that in the beginning you turn to wines that you're going to be able to tell somebody once again what you liked about it or didn't like about it. So it's really important that you start within your comfort zone. Finding wines that you don't like is equally as important as finding wines that you do. There are several different types of wines and categories that belong in every collection. You've got daily drinkers, things that you can open without conscience that aren't a big financial concern. You have special occasion wines that you pull out once in a while for, for a good day or a good dinner. You've got blue chip wines that are really important things that you open with some hesitation because they're difficult to replace. And then you've got your real tried and true blue chip investment grade wines that are very, very rare and very expensive to collect. The reason that you want all of them is because even if you're on elastic resources, there's not enough of the really scarce stuff for you to drink them every day. Your enjoyment of those wines is gonna be key to finding the right wine for the right occasion. Uh, and there is a different wine at a different price level for everybody. Wine really isn't like a lot of other collectibles. At the end of the day, wine is something to be consumed. It's supposed to be brought out on the table and to some degree there's a part of this being a big boy toy because eventually it's going to be worth zero when you're finished with it. Sharing wine and being social with wine is very much the point of wine. It's the purpose of being a wine collector. There are real advantages to buying wine at auction rather than your local grocery store. For starters, we deal with a lot of material that has a little bit more age to it. Um, so, so buying wine at, at auction is different because it's episodic. You buy it when an auction comes around. Uh, rather than browsing an aisle, you browse an online catalog. But you still make choices based the same way that you would either on vintage or region or label graphics. But you, you go to the website, you point, you click, you buy and the stuff ships. It's, it's just like if you were purchasing at the store, uh, either online or, or in a bricks and mortar building. Buying wine doesn't require that you have an underground temperature and humidity controlled cellar necessarily. When you start buying and you start buying meaningfully, maybe meaningfully is to have a couple cases around the house at all times, but when you start buying meaningfully, Typically, any kind of a regular refrigerator or cooler that doesn't allow the wines to come up above 60, 65 degrees will be sufficient, and that's fine for anything that you plan on holding for a couple years even. The one thing that I really stress to everybody who's getting the wine bug and wants to start collecting, don't buy too much of anything. In the beginning, your job is to try on as many wines as possible. And if you had a Chardonnay one day that you didn't like, don't make the decision that you just don't like Chardonnay. There's lots and lots of wine out there for the right occasion. 
You don't want to buy anything that appears to be in bad condition just because it's a bargain. When wine isn't in great condition, its value doesn't drop by 10% or 15%. It generally becomes zero. Uh, label conditions don't really matter. You want the wine inside to be healthy. So it's important that you look for signs of seepage. It's important that you contact whoever you're buying with and understand what types of background they have on the wines that they're selling. Typically, you're going to be working with somebody that you trust, and there aren't a lot of pitfalls. But don't buy anything on reputation. Just buy the stuff that you think is interesting.